Good day everybody, Tracy Brown here. I am getting ready to go to an appointment, so I thought I would do a quick video to bring up, I don't know, it's just kind of a clarity moment. It was something really interesting that um, happened recently. Um, again, it wasn't like a diet situation. So, and again, good morning to all who are watching live. I really appreciate it. So this happened to me um, recently, so I wanted to bring it up because of, if this is happening to you, well, remember, we're all in this together. So can you, and I love, you know, whenever I get in my car, I always wonder if people can hear me. So if somebody can give me a thumbs up or anything, just let me know that I'm heard <laughs> because I don't want to talk for, you know, 15 minutes and you're like, I didn't hear a word you said. So if anybody can give me a little indication that you can hear me, let me know before I keep going. Yay. Thank you so much. Ugh, relief. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so anyway, I, I don't know what it was, but I was in this group at a little, basically a kid's birthday party and people, it's the same people I've been around quite a bit, or, you know, kid, mom, dad groups, family groups, whatever. And, um, for some reason, I don't know the little table I was sitting at, we're eating our, our kind of barbecue food or whatever. And somebody said something about somebody's eating. And the mom's like, oh, don't talk, referring to me, don't talk to her about that because she's like, ooh, eat what you want, it doesn't matter. I'm like, okay, one, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but it's interesting because I think it's true that a lot of people don't understand. We're so used to this idea of like, you only look how you look based on how much you manage your food and what and you, how much you control it that even on the periphery of people maybe that know what you're doing or even people you've really explained to what you're doing, you're trying to like make peace with all food um, and not worry, not be obsessive. It ta I think it's, it takes a lot of education and a lot of really um, talking to people for them to not misunderstand what intuitive eating is. Cause I was a little like, this person's known me for years and I've been pretty clear about like, what I do and there's no judgment if you're gonna diet you do you but you know um, but what this is about is this is what it's about is you know learning to like trust your body and I think it still boils down to it's gonna be really hard for people even if you explained it um, in the most clear giving examples concise um, non-judgmental way about eating and food and bodies you possibly can people are still going to misunderstand sometimes what you're doing if one, they haven't read any of the information. And most importantly, if there's still like this block around like, Oh gosh, if I eat whatever I want, my body will change. I think that's the bottom line. I can't tell you how many times I've explained this to people. Oh gosh, it's not really about a free for all. And it's not that nutrition doesn't matter. It's just that, um, the worry about it is probably more health de detrimental in all kinds of little ways and big ways that we're not aware of than we've ever been taught. And as little kids, we weren't taught to worry about food or we weren't born worrying about food and weight that's taught. So the good news is we can learn that. And you know, depending on the person and what their, ex their experiences are, if they ask me questions or if they don't, and remember, I don't solicit any of this. Like people usually open it up to me and depending on my bandwidth, <laughs> and um, how much I want to talk about it, I do, you know, and sometimes these conversations are long and really productive and great. Sometimes they're five little minutes of like, yeah, I mean, we weren't born and meant to worry. It's just that that is the way of the world and we've got to unlearn that and here's how we do it or here's what it looks like and here's some of the um, nuances of it. So anyway, but I just thought it was really interesting that unless a person really has a little opening around the idea that you can be okay with your body. That's really the bottom line. If people don't believe that they can be okay with even any fluctuation with their weight, no matter how much you explain this to them, it's going to be like, Tracy says you can eat whatever you want and it doesn't matter. And I'm like, mm, no, nope, never said that. But, um, it's just really interesting. So I don't know if that's happened to you all. And I'd love to hear if you have any thoughts or, um, experiences with this because, um, you know, honestly, I work really hard of uh, really being nuanced and not being flippant about how this process works. And I get curious, like, did I say that? Did I get that impression? And it's like, mm, no, I 
try to be really careful without making it sound like a free-for-all because it's, it's really not. Is there a time, yes, where we need to like give full permission and really habituate to eating more freely? Yes. I mean, all of us has gone through that. I think the more support we have in it, the less scary that process is. But um, th that's the bottom line is that a lot of people um, don't really hear about process and nuance they hear like oh you can do whatever you want and doesn't matter I'm like nope nobody said that but it when that happens it reminds me of like oh that paradigm is still there of seeing food as either it doesn't matter and you can do whatever you want and there's you know whatever you don't care or it's like you're being really watching and I want to let remind you all that this this doesn't always happen in situations where it's high tense or people are wanting to bait you. It's just general everyday stuff that if people kind of know what you're, what you're about or what you're working on, then there's just that impression. So it reminds me like, oh, people are still operating from an all or nothing way of thinking about things. Um, and that's sometimes what we're, we're bumping up against. So it's not that you didn't explain it. It's that, um, you know, the paradigm's still what it is that people struggle with not having certainty and absolutes. And I think that's the bottom line. So that's something if you're trying to explain to see their physicians or friends or family, you know, it's not about what you're trying to get them to do or understand. It's about you explaining like what's been really helpful for me is seeing how much I relied on certainty with food and how much my brain used to spit on the perfectionism of food and getting it right to feel more comfortable versus being learning how to be discerning and live in the gray. And that is what, the process is really about and the learning to trust that like well whatever's happening now might not be happening with my eating in three months or in six months or in two years and that's absolutely how it works so I would love to hear from anybody watching right now live if you have any experiences like that where you're really like feeling like you're doing a pretty good job of explaining things um, and it doesn't seem to land and then you're blaming yourself does that happen to you and if you don't want to comment, you can't. You don't have to now. But I would love to hear if that's something that's happening for you, and I would be happy to help you. Whatever that sticking point is within your smaller sphere of people, or wider, or maybe not your your um, your work, your um, mom group, your church, whatever. Because that's where I see um, things feel kind of uncomfortable for people sometimes. And if we can. If I can help you make that feel like you have like the tools you need to feel more confident without feeling like you're doing it wrong, that's something I'd love to help you with. So, um, what else can I say about that? You know, it's one of those things that um, at the end of the day, the more you get comfortable, I just want to end with this last bit. The more you get more solid in your 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 um, non diet, just life, honestly, and your recovery the less this kind of stuff triggers you. So for me, it wasn't a trigger of like, kind of out in a big, a smallish big group of people like, oh, go and go there with her about food. And I'm like, oh, I didn't feel like put on the spot or I didn't feel ashamed or I didn't feel like, like, oh my gosh, it's like, huh, where'd that come from? And, you know, I was able to go kind of get the pieces of my mind pretty quickly where that came from. And it's from this misunderstanding, really, of what intuitive eating really is. And me like, okay, did I not explain it well? And in that situation, the answer is no. I've done pretty well. Um, um, is there more that I could be educating and working on? Probably if that door ever opens. But again, I don't insert myself in everybody's <laughs> business unless they talk about it and ask me questions, to be honest. So... Anyway, I just wanted to put, give you a real life example of what it looks like. Um, oh, this is a good one. Thank you, Debbie. Let's talk about this. I'm going to read this for those who aren't watching it. Is I'm having a problem of people trying to negate my idea. Tell me they have to watch. Oh, there's, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, this is kind of honestly what I'm talking about. Um, it was a, it, my, my circumstance was a kind negation, but it was this level of like, oh, I couldn't do that. And well, maybe that works for her, but that's not for me or maybe not for you. That's going to happen because you, more than likely, 
everybody here watching individually is probably going to be in the minority of people that are around who don't think that intuitive eating can work or is for them. And remember, that's going to come from not any evidence on their part that intuitive eating doesn't work. But the truth is intuitive eating doesn't work to try to make yourself weigh something that your body isn't meant to weigh. And that's what's so provocative that they're saying it doesn't work because it's, it's, it's not the old paradigm approach. And so if this is your struggle, it's like, it doesn't, I think you guys are talking about, think, remember that a lot of times people are talking about two different things. When we, as people watching and listening to this are in recovery, it's not really about that intuitive being doesn't work to get you more free, to help you have less obsession, to, I'm trying to make some notes here, so three, to help you improve your sense of self-care and solidness in yourself and trusting your needs. That's, it totally works for all that. It's just not a good weight loss tool. It's not a reliable weight loss tool. It's a tool of eating the way honestly, and this is my belief, and doesn't mean it's everybody else's belief, but my belief is this is the way we were born to eat. You know, we were born to eat from hunger and fullness and to eat a variety of foods and to not get hung up on what we eat one meal means anything about us morally or um, who we are, what we're meant to be and do in the world um, or what our worth and value is. So if your worth and value is still a lot hung up on the size of your body and what you think that will get you in terms of social acceptance or lovability or avoiding criticism, if you're still in that paradigm, of course people are going to say intuitive eating doesn't work because it's not really about the food at this point. We're talking about two different things. So I hope that answer helps because that's the reality. When people say, oh, it doesn't work, I've had that told me dozens and dozens of times in not this bubble that we all um, work really hard in, just in everyday general life of like, oh, well, that sounds great for you, but then it wouldn't work for me. I've heard that so many times. I'm like, well, wouldn't work for what? I have to count. So they'll say, oh, I have to count my calories. I have to watch it to eat. And I'm like, well, you can, but you don't have to. It's not really about that you can't do intuitive eating. It's like you're afraid that you can't let go because your weight will change. That's what we're really talking about. And so, anyway, I hope that answer helps the, the, that, the answer to that question. So I want you to take heart that you're actually talking about different, two different things. Um, and that's coming from a place of fear. So if people were less afraid about their weight, intuitive eating would probably be a pretty viable intuitive eating combined with gentle nutrition um, and being really attuned to like our needs based on our circumstances and in the histories we have around our traumas and dysregulations and learning how to like here are my body signals and here are my signals of other things that are feeling up or down for me. So again, hope not to be rambly, but that's, that's what we're really talking about here. So we have to be solid in the process for ourselves and then what that means for the betterment of our lives. And I know that's hard to articulate and that's, that's what I continually was always work on. People ask me questions as well. So you're not alone. We're all doing this together. And, but the first step really for all of us to not get triggered by that stuff is find my feet. Why am I doing this? What are the benefits for me? And they might not realize that that's what we're actually talking about with this process. We're not talking about weight management here and that's what they're actually talking about. So I've got to hop off, got an appointment, but I'm so grateful you all are here watching this, whether it's the replay or live. I appreciate your your presence. I appreciate you. Um, if you know somebody that would benefit from this, letting them know about it. Um, I think that's about it today. I will talk to you all really soon and have a great day. Take care.